By framing our perspectives, flexible words can even shape how we behave. So for instance, if we're told that this patient is battling cancer, the language of war might encourage us to consider aggressive treatments for the cancer. In contrast, hearing that the patient is on a journey might actually discourage short-term invasive treatments. So because language reflects how we think, it can reveal how we frame important issues. by understanding how people around the globe talk about terrorism, climate change, or economic policy, we can better understand their underlying assumptions and biases. And this could lead to greater international consensus. So interestingly, work from my lab shows that although languages do differ from English in interesting ways, they nonetheless share many of the same patterns of flexibility. This suggests that despite geographic and cultural differences, speakers of all languages may share a common cognitive framework, making it possible for us to understand one another's perspectives. My lab uses eye tracking technology, which monitors where children look as they're listening to language. Using methods like this, my lab has shown that children anticipate the different uses of flexible words from a very young age. So after learning that an action involving a tool is called daxing, children expect the tool itself to be called a dax. This is similar to how we can hammer with a hammer or shovel with a shovel. Our ability to redefine the role of an object in different contexts allows us to see problems in new ways and to come up with insightful solutions. The study of flexible language and thought paves the way for many real-world applications. We can better understand the perspectives of one another. We can find ways of promoting children's open-mindedness and creativity. One day, we can even build artificial intelligence that's capable of using and understanding creative uses of language.